this doesn't really feel real, like, all of it that happened. It's horrible to think that just a normal day at school can become so heartbreaking. A community in mourning after a deadly school shooting in Georgia. Thank you for joining us for In the News Now. I'm Jennifer Bellamy. Terrifying moments for students and staff after a shooter opened fire Wednesday morning inside Appalachie High School. It happened in Winder, Georgia, less than an hour's drive from Atlanta. Four people were killed, two teachers and two students. Two math teachers, Richard Aspinwall and Christina Irami, and 14-year-olds Christian Angulo and Mason Schirmerhorn. Nine others were taken to the hospital and are expected to make a full recovery. The suspected shooter, 14-year-old Colt Gray, was arrested on the scene. He appeared in court Friday morning. He's facing four counts of felony murder and will be tried as an adult facing life without parole. Now, because he's under 18, he cannot be sentenced to death. About 50 people were inside the courtroom for the hearings. In addition to members of the media and sheriff's deputies, some family members of victims in the front row hugging each other and one woman clutching a stuffed animal. Before the hearings at the Barrow County Courthouse, workers set out boxes of tissue along courtroom benches. Meanwhile, a makeshift memorial continues to grow. People have placed flowers and stuffed animals to honor the victims. It's also been a place for students and families to comfort each other. The tragedy has left the community heartbroken and in shock. 11 Alive's Angelina Salcido has more on how the community is grieving. On our hearts, there ought to be all those kids, all the students and all the faculty. Prayer through tragedy. The wider community holds one another after the unthinkable. Some of you are feeling confusion. Some of you are feeling anger. And I saw an ambulance after ambulance, and it's just, I thought to myself this morning, I was like, God, I hope it's not a shooting. We have a group chat. Everybody was saying, y'all okay, y'all okay. When they first announced it on the intercom, my teacher immediately said, everyone get in the corner. I can't believe it. Like, because, like, literally yesterday I saw them, and I can't believe them. Like, they just died like that. My son was texting me while I was at work, and I rushed to the school and got in there, and I've been with him ever since. Parents are still hugging their kids as reality sets in. I, it could have been me, and I... I'm just thankful that I'm here and I'm sorry for all the families that did lose their babies. Through prayer and love, the Winder community lifts one another. Tonight seems dark to me, but mercy comes with the morning sun. After the tragedy, details emerged about the history of the accused shooter, Colt Gray. Here you can see investigators searching his family's home. The FBI confirmed that the suspect was investigated by the Jackson County Sheriff's Office last year after he allegedly posted photos of guns online and threatened to commit a school shooting. The Sheriff's Office interviewed Gray and his father, who said there were guns inside the house, but the teen did not have unsupervised access to those guns. The Sheriff's Office did alert local schools for continued monitoring, but said there was no probable cause for arrest. The day after the shooting, the suspect's father, Colin Gray, was also arrested. He's charged with manslaughter, second degree murder and cruelty to children. He appeared in the same courtroom after his son. 11 Alive has more on his connection to this tragedy. A day after agents surrounded his home. Biggest thing, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is that he is in custody. 54 year old Colin Gray is behind bars. GPI director Chris Hosey says his charges are directly related to his son's actions. He is charged with the following four counts of involuntary manslaughter, two counts of second degree murder, and eight counts of cruelty to children. Colt Gray, that was arrested yesterday for this incident, has now been charged with four counts of felony murder. Both the father and son held in the Barrow County Jail while the community grieves. We're heartbroken. A young person brought a gun into a school, committed an evil act, and he took lives and he injured many other people, not only physically, but mentally. The Winder community is still processing this tragedy, prays the teacher and eight students shot will heal. Nine people that are injured will, will expect to make a full recovery. And we'll get past this. You see behind me up here on the hill, we got a vigil going on at our flagpole. 
I welcome you to go see those kids and those young people that are hurt. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp spoke about the hurt being felt in the community and his personal connection to Barrow County. This hits home for us. Uh, being from Athens, just down the road, Marty and I having a daughter that taught first grade just a few years ago. You know, I represented Bear County when I was in the state Senate 20 years ago. These are our neighbors, these are our friends, and this community is hurting today. One of the teachers killed was also a football coach. Current and former players remembering Coach A. We really just didn't want to believe it because that was somebody who we would have never expected for this to happen on any given day. Isaiah Hooks came to lay his bouquet and remember the victims of the shooting that happened Wednesday. One in particular, Coach Richard Aspinwall. Some people were around it when it had happened, so they had automatically, they were telling their parents and then they had told us. He was known simply as Coach A. Current and former athletes like Markel Broughton say his impact could be felt well beyond the football field. He would always check up on me after anything that ever popped up. You know, he was always reaching out. A relationship that went beyond player and coach. He showed you that he cared about you, he showed you that he was, you were always on his mind. Memories both athletes say are more precious than ever. We're also hearing from political leaders about the shooting. Former President Donald Trump posted on Truth Social saying, quote, our hearts are with the victims and loved ones of those affected by the tragic events in Winder, Georgia. These cherished children were taken from us far too soon by a sick and deranged monster. At a campaign event, Vice President Kamala Harris said it is outrageous that parents have to worry about their children at school and it needs to stop. And President Joe Biden releasing a statement calling the shooting, quote, a horrific reminder of how gun violence continues to tear our communities apart. Democratic vice presidential nominee Governor Tim Walls is a former high school coach, just like one of the victims. He spoke about the shooting at a campaign stop, saying we have a responsibility to keep our kids safe. And it's a reminder of the rest of the country. Um, we've got work to do, and I, for one, I'm sick and tired of hearing about thoughts and prayers rather than actually doing something. About it. I say this to all of you. I know guns. I'm a veteran. I'm a hunter. But we can't let them make this just about the Second Amendment. I defend the Second Amendment. But our first responsibility is to keep our kids safe. Republican vice presidential nominee Senator J.D. Vance described school shootings as a, quote, fact of life, saying that restricted access to guns is, quote, not the thing that is going to solve the problem. He called for tighter security measures at schools in the wake of this latest shooting. We, we've got to bolster security so that if a psycho wants to walk through the front door and kill a bunch of children, they're not able to. Because if these psychos are going to have to go after our kids, we've got to be prepared for it. We don't have to like the reality that we live in, but it is the, the reality that we live in. and We got to deal with it. Vance also touted efforts in Congress to give schools more money for security. And after the shooting at Appalachian High School, two school resource officers are being praised as heroes. 11 Alive Savannah Levens pulled training records and found they recently prepared for an active shooting scenario. In the wake of the tragic shooting at Appalachie High School, the officers who were the first on the scene and sprang into action are being hailed as heroes. It may have gotten a lot worse if they hadn't had people that were familiar with the school. Chris Harvey is Deputy Executive Director of the Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council, or POST, the agency that sets training standards for all law enforcement officers in the state. I think um, after what happened in Uvalde, it really kind of woke people up. I can tell you that in Georgia, the, the response was, that's not going to happen here. We're not going to have people waiting while children are be bleeding to death and, and being shot. Um, we're going to go in there and solve the problem. We pulled post training records for the two school resource officers listed as assigned to Appalachie High, as well as the Barrow County SRO unit commander and supervisor. All attended at least three separate school active shooter trainings at local schools over the last year. The unit commander attended seven in that time, including one at Appalachie High. I think, frankly, it, it, it probably has something to do with the results in terms of being able to stop the shooter. Um, take them into custody without causing you know, further injury or death. And those trainings weren't even required. Post didn't mandate active shooter training for new Georgia officers until three months ago. That was probably the number one 
subject that when we sat down to review uh, the basic mandate and said, we've got to get active shooter in there. When was the last time that the training requirements were reevaluated? Well, the last time they were updated, the basic mandate was updated was in 2006. Not only were the Barrow County SROs not required to take active shooter training, they didn't even need the hours at all. The training requirement for law enforcement in Georgia is 20 hours each year. The four SROs we identified have a combined 348 hours already this year. If any of the officers who responded to this, the SROs, watch this, what would you like? to say to them. I think the only thing I could you know, say to them is that, uh, is that they did a hell of a job and I hope they, they realize how important it was that they were ready to, to do what needed to be done and that they answered the call, they put themselves in harm's way and that, that, that I and I believe probably everyone in Georgia is very proud of them. All nine of the people hospitalized in the shooting are expected to make a full recovery. That's according to Barrow County Sheriff Judd Smith, who also thanked teachers calling them heroes. Again, please lift up our community. Please keep these children, these teachers. We call them teachers, but I call them heroes. Um, we met with them today. Emotions are very high, obviously, but we told them that we love them, we love our teachers and what they do, and we're very happy at the fact that they stood in the gap between evil to protect their children, and we want to include them in the, save, the lives that were saved as well yesterday. But I wanted to report to you that all nine people that are injured will, will expect to make a full recovery. We'll continue to follow the developments in this tragic case. That's it for now for this In the News Now. Thanks for watching.